Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rick, for such a, a warm and lovely welcome. And uh, it is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you all on behalf of Harm Reduction International. You're an intimidating crowd, given how much I respect and admire the work you all do, but I'll do my best to uh, say a few words for the organization. I'd like to take this opportunity to set the scene for this year's conference over the next few days. We've made the theme of this year's conference a call to leadership. This theme is appropriate given the decision made by the Malaysian government in 2005 to introduce harm reduction programs in order to turn around what was then an HIV epidemic amongst people who use drugs. A decade later, Malaysia's HIV epidemic, especially amongst people who inject drugs, has turned around dramatically. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for your leadership on this issue. Indeed, we have countless examples in all regions of the world where harm reduction has saved lives, saved money, and helped promote the human rights and dignity of people who use drugs. Given the huge success harm reduction has achieved in countries across the world, I can't help but wonder why we still lack strong international political leadership around harm reduction. I don't need to tell any of you that harm reduction works and the evidence has long been clear. Yet, unfortunately, evidence alone is not always enough to break through political denial and through the stigma that surrounds drug use and drug issues. The harm reduction movement's call for genuine and committed political leadership comes at a critical time. As pace for the international drug policy reform picks up in the lead to the UN General Assembly special session on drugs taking place in 2016, it is more important than ever that harm reduction is at the forefront of that agenda. And with political leadership must come financial leadership. I am fully aware that you all know how acutely, appallingly low funding is at the moment for harm reduction around the world. But I'm going to remind us all again of these figures because they are so shocking. An estimated 100 billion US dollars is spent every year on punitive responses to drug control, yet harm reduction investment amounts to only 160 million dollars a year. This is just 7% of what is required to scale it up fully. And we should take time to think about those figures because they encapsulate all that is missing on the global response on drug use, health, and human rights. The world is going to miss the UN target of halving HIV amongst people who inject drugs by 2015. In fact, we're going to miss it by a staggering 80%, placing it amongst some of the worst performing of all targets set at the 2011 high-level meeting on HIV. The world has failed people who use drugs. And we will continue to do so unless we urgently apply the brakes to the money that we are wasting and refocus our efforts on what we know that works. Harm Reduction International estimates that just 10 cents of every dollar spent on drug enforcement could fund the global HIV and hepatitis C response amongst people who inject drugs twice over every year. A 10% reinvestment of current drug enforcement spending by 2020 or 10 by 20 is the collective demand of the harm reduction movement. And at the heart of, the, of that movement, of course, is the community themselves. The HIV response has taught us many things, but none more important than without the community, we are nothing. We can only achieve this urgent public health turnaround, end stigma, and fulfill human rights obligations if we include those most affected by this crisis, people who use drugs. Leadership in harm reduction means supporting community-driven initiatives, and it means working in solidarity across peer-driven networks. We were privileged again to work with INPUD, with NSWP and GMP Plus in developing this year's conference, and as ever, you are welcome here with us. But that in itself will not be enough. We all know this is a pivotal moment in the broader drug policy, and to seize it, we must be brave. We need to be bold, and we need to be savvy, but most of all, we must work together. We in the harm reduction movement can be proud that we count among us some of the brightest and best advocates for health and human rights in the world. And in making our theme a call for leadership, we really wanted to celebrate our own movement and the leadership every single one of us plays every day to help our harm reduction movement move forward. 
We wanted to celebrate those who are acting every day to save lives, to challenge discrimination, to fight for human rights and dignity, and to help our friends. On, half, on behalf of Harm Reduction International, I want to thank you all for the leadership you show every day and the work that you do. Together, I believe we're going to make a difference this week, but importantly, together, I genuinely believe that this movement can change the world. I want to thank you so much for coming this week, and I hope you enjoy the conference. Thank you.